However, that doesn't get the dogs down. Time winding down in the quarter. J.J. Johnson takes his time and airs it out down the sideline. Raymond Santiago stays in bounds. CP moves the chains and that sets this up. Johnson keeps it himself. The senior somewhere in that pile makes it 7-0 in favor of the home team. To the second, Crown Point with another scoring chance. Once again, they turn to Johnson as he dives for the end zone. Another touchdown makes it a 14-point lead. Later, the Bulldogs with a chance to make the hole even bigger. Johnson fakes the handoff, fires over the middle, and it is right on the money to land in Delich. The man they call Delhi makes it a 21-0 ball game. Chesterton looks to respond. The Trojans trying to get something before the halftime whistle, and they do just that. Sebastian Boswell hands it off to Garrett Lewis. The junior taking care of the rest, running past one defender. Now he is just one man to beat. Some fancy footwork to avoid the shoestring tackle. This monster's 74-yard touchdown run has the Trojans on the board and within striking distance at the break. To the second half, CP gets it right back though. Johnson with another keeper finds a hole and he finds his third TD of the night. The Trojans though just will not quit. Boswell looks right, floats one up towards the end zone. Tyler Peterson makes the nice catch. Trojans cut into the lead once again thinking come back, but the Bulldogs bite right back. Ensuing kickoff, Santiago fields the kick, slips through the coverage, avoids being taken down and it is off to the races. The senior turning on the Jets down the sideline, forget about it. Ground point at Adds on and they never look back. The Bulldogs win 41-21 and will have a chance to win the Doolin outright and finish the regular campaign undefeated when they travel to Michigan City next week. Postseason football is upon us. The journey to Lucas Oil Stadium officially begins tonight with sectionals. Westside goes on the road to take on Hobart. Brickies have the ball to begin the game, and they waste no time getting things going. Noah Ehrlich takes the snap, eyes downfield, and lets it fly. The sophomore connects with Connor Stafford for the touchdown. Hobart strikes first. Closing minutes of the opening quarter, Brickies threatening again, and now they go with the ground attack. The handoff is to Trey Gibson, who goes up the middle, avoids one tackler. Still going is Gibson after fending off two more tacklers, and it is off to the races. 50 yards later, the senior takes it to the house. It's 14-0 in favor of the home team. Ensuing kickoff, Hobart tries the onside kick. Brady King gets his hands on it, keeping his eye on the ball. The senior collects it, turns on the burners, and takes it all the way back for the touchdown. Cougars with some momentum, but Hobart takes it right back. Next, Bricky possession. The handoff is to Gibson on fourth down. All he needs is two yards, but he decides he wants more. A 42-yard touchdown run makes it a 21-6 ball game, and that's not the last we'd see from him. Hobart with another scoring chance again later. They turn to Gibson, and again he delivers, collecting his third touchdown of the night. Under five and a half now. Hobart looking to put some icing on the cake. Ryan Pimentel boots one through for a 39-yard field goal. Everything going the Bricky's way. Hobart wins 37-6. They move on to the sectional semifinal where they will meet Highland next week. Highland took down Whiting in last year's contest between the two clubs. The Oilers look for some revenge as they hit the road to face the Trojans. After a scoreless first, we'll pick things up in the second quarter. Highland trying to break through and plays like this will help. Max Smith sticks it in the gut of Joshua Hubbard. The junior unleashes beast mode and refuses to go down, taking defenders with him as he moves the chains. Trojans gaining momentum as they take to the skies now. Smith drops back and airs it out, connecting with Jason Lawrence on the long ball. Highland in business. Shortly after, Smith on the keeper finds the end zone. The home team's strikes first at 6-0. A few possessions later, Highland looking to add to its lead. The Trojans going with the aerial attack again. This time, though, it doesn't work out. Nolan Toth makes the interception. The visitors take over. Whiting looking for some points before the half. Nick Davenport with time goes over the middle to Jeremiah Allard. The big man rumbles forward, picking up a first down and more. Final seconds of the half. Last chance for Whiting to get the touchdown, but the Highland defense stands tall. The Trojans stuff the ball carrier and take a 6-0 lead into the locker room. Out of the break, Highland defense deep in Whiting territory looking for the end zone. Davenport shows he can get it done on both sides of the ball, knocking this one out of bounds. Ensuing Euler possession, Whiting with another chance to pull even. Davenport takes the snap, goes to his right, and races in for the touchdown. We are tied up at sixes. Neither side could score in regulation, so to overtime we go. Whiting with the first possession. The Oilers look to pass into the end zone. Right there for the interception is Nicholas Johnson. Now all Highland needs is a score to win it. The Trojans hand it off to Lawrence, and he takes care of the rest. Highland wins the OT Thriller 12-6. The Trojans are in the win column for the first time in 2022. Two, 
The dream of a repeat continues. With its 48-29 win over Fort Wayne Lures at Semi-State, Andran clinched a second straight trip to Lucas Oil Stadium. It's a 365-day sport now with, with off-season lifting and summer. and um, you know, So to go through the grind of a season and the off-season, there's really no better way to, to finish it than, than, than playing Thanksgiving weekend in Lucas Oil. I don't want last year to seem like a fluke, like we've proved ourselves here that we're meant to be at the Dome. And so as soon as that clock hit zero, I just knew that like we were meant to be there and I was so excited. We lost uh, our starting quarterback the first week and you know we didn't know what was going to happen, but we kept fighting, we kept working every day, came to practice and we put in that work and we backed here going to the dome. In the long history of 59er football, the team has reached the state championship in back-to-back -back years twice, but never been able to capture consecutive crowns. This group believes they can finally change that. It's just all about looking at that goal. At that goal, looking at that second plaque, looking at that second ring, looking at like in the future that oh that jersey with the state patch on it. It's that type of mentality. My brother played football and you know he didn't make it very far, so I'm wearing his same jersey. And I really want to just push that number 66 even further. We want all our hard work to, you know, kind of pay off in a victory, and that's kind of what our, our focus is. Beating a team you've already beaten once is never easy. And with a rematch with Evansville Modern Day looming, the Niners understand the importance of keeping the Hunters' mentality now that they are the hunted. We have the target on our backs. You know, it's been like that the entire season. People have wanted us. So we're kind of used to it. We're kind of going into it with these high expectations, and we're ready for that type of mentality, just like we were ready for LaVille. We're willing to do anything to get this dog. You know, it's a rematch, so, you know, they go, they want blood from us. So, but we want blood too, so we're going to be fighting out. You know, it's going to be a great game. Last year it was the Gatorade Player of the Year Award, now Andran's Drake Bowen is the recipient of the Butkus Award. Just to be named the nation's best linebacker is pretty pretty special. Uh, it's something that I've, wor I've worked for um, all, all my life is to be the best at you know so whatever I was doing. And so to be the best linebacker in, in the nation is pretty awesome. And just having the honor of something like that in and of itself is, is incredibly special and rare. And, and to know that it's going to somebody um, that's obviously from the Andrean community and somebody that's worked as hard as him, um, I'm very, very proud of him and I'm, I'm very happy for him as well. This award ranks the top 51 linebackers in the country at the high school, college, and pro level. And while it is a linebacker-specific award, Bowen appreciates how playing on both sides of the ball have helped him find success on defense. On offense, too, that's, that's something that um, a lot of people have, have said is that you know, if you play offense and running back, it does translate to linebacker because you see the holes, um, you see how the line's blocking, and know where everything's supposed to hit. And so um, you know, playing running back has definitely helped in my ability at, at linebacker. While this award was presented specifically to the 59ers senior, Bowen can't thank his teammates enough for how they've helped him become a better player. The Bucks Award doesn't happen without um, you know, D-line, safeties, corners, do everybody else doing their job, other linebackers, and then if, on the offense side, you know, O-line blocking, um, and so that's just, it's, it's a full team effort, and, uh, you know, Watt has my name on the award. A lot of it couldn't have been done without the help of, help of my teammates. Soon he will be trading in his Niner red and gold for Notre Dame blue and gold, but Bowen won't ever forget the opportunities the school and football have given to him. There's just so many other variables that are pulling away from, like, football and team and culture and character. Uh, and Drake always stayed true to that. And so I think given all of the other potential opportunities to steer away from that, he never did. My teammates and my coaches always pushing me in the right direction and you know pushing me to be better than I was um, the day before and always striving to go beyond better than what I was. So, um, you know, everything that's kind of happened here is, has happened for a reason and, and I'm so thankful for all the memories and um, you know, all the things that have happened at this place.